AMD just announced their 1440p GPUs for this generation. What performance can you really expect out of these new GPUs? And should you buy? Let's get into it. AMD just announced their mid-range GPUs in the RX 7700 XT and the RX 7800 XT. AMD will offer the 7800 XT as a reference GPU. The 7700 XT will only be offered by AIB partners. They are both classified by AMD as 1440p 60 plus FPS GPUs. Let's look at the specs. Starting with the 7700 XT and you see that it has 54 compute units. 54 compute units? The 6700 XT before it only had 40 compute units and so did the 5700 XT before it. That is a 35% upgrade. I'm liking this one so far. Next is the game clock at 2,171 megahertz. That is 10% slower than the 6700 XT and 13% slower than the 6750. It has the same 12 gigabytes of VRAM with the same 192 bit memory bus and the memory speed is also the same as the 6750 XT. It has half the infinity cache and the total board power at 245 watts is 6% higher than the 6700 XT and 2% lower than the 6750. So my concern now is while it does have more shaders, it seems like it will be power limited and thus clock speed limited. AMD did provide their own comparison chart of the 7700 versus the 4060 Ti. In some ways, this chart reminded me of the release of the 6700 XT back in 2021. Back then, AMD created simple charts to convince you that the 6700 XT was closer to a 3070 than it was a 3060 Ti. I did some detailed analysis on leaked information and I stated back then, with more games, it would be closer to a 3060 Ti. And two years later, even if you look at the latest benchmarks by Steve at Hardware Unboxed, you see that at 1440p, the 6700 is like the 3060 Ti, while the 3070 is 9.5% faster. According to this slide from AMD, the 7700 is 14% faster than a 4060 Ti. However, that includes ray tracing games. If you look only at the rasterization improvement, then it is 17% faster. What is about 17% faster than a 4060 Ti? An RX 6800 non-XT. Since AMD is optimistic in its benchmarks and the selection of games, I'll just say that in a large 40 game benchmark, I expect it to be on average around a 3070 Ti to a 6800 non-XT level of performance. Please keep in mind, like I showed in my RDNA 3 comparison to RDNA 2, I would expect the 7700 XT to excel in games like Cyberpunk and you could see performance clearly exceed the 6800. However, that will be the exception rather than the rule. Now that we understand what to expect from the 7700 XT, let's move on to the 7800 XT. And starting with the specs, I am more interested in comparing with last generation's RX 6800 non-XT. This goes back to my last video and understanding a comparison of RDNA 2 versus RDNA 3. Cleaning it up, we can do a direct comparison. They both have 60 compute units and they both have 60 ray tracing accelerators. RDNA 3 did add AI accelerators. The game clock is 17% higher than last gen, and the boost clock is 15% higher than last gen. It has the same 16 gigabytes of VRAM and the same 256 bit memory bus, but the memory speed on the 7800 is 22% faster, but the infinity cache is cut in half. DisplayPort is upgraded, and it also now includes AV1 encoding, and finally, the total board power is strangely 5% higher. And when I look at the upgraded specs and given the RDNA 3 architecture is a few percent faster, then I would conclude the performance range will be between a 6800 XT and a 6900 XT. Again, AMD did provide a chart comparing the 7800 to the 4070 in AMD's selection of games. Removing the ray tracing games, since the 4070 is clearly ahead, the 7800 XT is 9% faster in rasterization. What is 9% faster than a 4070? A 6900 XT. 
Again, these charts do remind me of the 6700 XT announcement two years ago, so don't be surprised if in a 40 game benchmark, the average drops closer to a 6800 XT. Also, if the average was truly closer to a 6900 XT, then AMD would have priced it higher than 499. So at worst, we should be getting performance like a 6800 XT. Now the MSRP of the 6800 XT was $649, so almost three years later, since the launch of Big Navi, AMD is offering you 6,800 XT levels of performance for $500, which is $150 lower. And that's better than Nvidia offering you 3080 levels of performance for a savings of $100. It doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't change the price to performance ratio. You could have purchased a 6,800 XT for just over $500 before the holidays last year. And they are still up on Newegg today for just over $500. The 7800 XT feels like a product replacement, not a generational upgrade. The 7700 XT is even worse of a product replacement since 6800 non-XT models could be had for $450 or less. At Newegg today, as low as $429. And at least the 6800 has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Again, a product replacement and not a generational upgrade. And if that's not enough, the 7700 XT is DOA for the same reason the 7900 XT was DOA when it launched. In December, when AMD launched the 7900 XT, it was $100 cheaper or 10% less than the XTX. But the XTX was 21% faster according to AMD's own numbers on their website. Checking tech power up and they say 18%, so AMD is a little optimistic. Taking the data for these new GPUs, also now on AMD's website, and plotting the results and taking the average, you find that the 7800 XT is 21% faster than a 7700 XT. So even if AMD's numbers are again a little optimistic and it ends up a few percent short, it's still 10% more money for about 20% more performance and for that $50, you also get 16 gigabytes of VRAM and not 12. It's a no brainer. The 7700 XT, just like the 7900 XT when it launched, is DOA. The 7700 XT really needs to be 399 or lower. AMD is so in tune with its community that they took a failed strategy on its 4K GPUs and decided to apply the exact same strategy on its 1440p GPUs. Really? Didn't they learn anything? I guess they are living in a different reality. Or they are applying that age old saying, if at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. AMD Radeon is just sad to watch. It's like a train wreck. And it's so very frustrating when their competition in Nvidia is non-existent at this end of the market and that they only offer you a 1080p GPU for under $500. I said in my last video, if AMD Radeon can't bring a performance benefit, then they need to bring a cost benefit and this GPU doesn't move the price to performance needle. AMD could dominate the 1440p segment, but they won't. They have lost so much mind share that they would need to be aggressive on pricing just to get people to try Radeon. And this pricing is not aggressive enough. It is clear that AMD Radeon does not care about market share. The danger is, the longer they play the game this way, they will continue to lose mind share and they will become more and more irrelevant in the discrete GPU market. Should you buy? If you bought last gen, then skip it. If you need to buy something and you won't buy used or last gen, I expect at these MSRP prices, they will sit on shelves for months and that to move them by year's end, we will see discounts for the holidays. So I would wait if you want one of these. If I was buying and $500 was my limit, I would pick up an open box RTX 4070, especially if I was an eSports player. The 12 gigabyte VRAM limit is not a problem when you play competitively at lower texture settings. Now you know the performance range of what to expect, but I would still wait for the reviews as GPUs this generation have not been selling out this year. I have had an interesting time testing the 7900 XT Hellhound and you'll see that video soon. In the meantime, here is a link to my RDNA 2 versus RDNA 3 videos. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe. 
and I will see you in the next one.